Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. We have a returning guest today, my buddy Garrett, who has the 5th Gen 4Runner. If you remember, we've done lots of videos with Garrett. We've installed the Gobi roof rack. We've installed C4 rear bumper and front bumper. We've done lots of videos with Garrett, and today we have him back for another video. Now, we just recently put a C4 gas tank skid on Garrett's rig, and that is just adding one more layer of protection. He currently has a front skid plate protecting his radiator and his motor. He has a skid plate now protecting his gas tank. And because Garrett likes C4 products, he found out they have another skid plate for a 5th Gen 4Runner that he doesn't currently own, and that is a skid plate for the rear differential. Now, why would you want to put your skid plate on the rear differential? It is basically the lowest hanging thing underneath your rig. So as you're four wheeling, obviously you're gonna try to track through a route where you're not gonna be hitting anything with that low part of the third member. But you might get in situations where your best line is gonna be a line with high obstructions under the center of your rig and one of those might strike the bottom of the rear axle or the third member and cause some damage. Now those things are built pretty darn beefy but one thing that's common that happens is people scrape over rocks with that low point of the third member and what it does is it messes up your ability to get that drain plug out. Some people like Garrett choose to run a skid plate on that axle so you protect it from damage from rocks. The only downside to adding a skid plate like that is you do lose a little bit of clearance, but I think it's a worthwhile trade-off. I'd rather protect my rear axle from damage, especially that most lowest hanging part of it and make it hard to get your drain bolt out once you scrape it a few times over some boulders. So I'd rather lose a little clearance and protect it rather than have that little bit extra clearance but then run the risk of damaging it on rocks and other obstructions. So Garrett followed my lead and other people's leads and he's gonna put a C4 skid plate on his rear axle. There probably are other manufacturers of rear differential skid plates but because we both know and like C4. It was an easy decision to use C4 as the company to manufacture the skid plate Garrett's gonna use. Everything they build is pretty darn nice. Everything fits together well. There's not a lot of cursing involved and drilling things out or having to use a file on something because something's not fitting right. All their things fit really well, so that's a huge plus. In addition, they offer some pretty good instructions too, whether it's on their website or it's on a link to toyota4runner.org. They offer instructions, which is huge because you don't wanna go into these things blindly and have to guess how things go together. So we're utilizing their instructions right from their website and we're gonna get this thing installed. Because Garrett has an e-locker rear differential, he chose the option where it has a little extra protection for that e-locker motor. So that's an option you can choose if you also have an e-locker. It's not a mandatory thing. So with that said, let's show you what these pieces look like. So here's what the skid plate looks like. It comes bare metal. You have your choice of either rattle canning it, whichever color you want, maybe hot pink, or you can get it powder coated. And that's what Garrett chose. He chose the powder coated because it's more durable. So this is the side that faces the third member and then Here's what it looks like underneath. And again, they have their cool little C4 logo that's gonna be facing towards the rear. So this is what it would look like going on the rig, just like that. It has these brackets right here that go over the axle tubes and attach it just like this. We have this pinion bracket that's gonna go over right where the drive shaft comes in and it's gonna lock it in right here. This is the optional e-locker protector. This is gonna be attached right here on the skid with a couple of the supplied carriage head bolts. And then it has a bag of hardware, a bunch of carriage head bolts, washers, and nuts. And that's everything that comes with the kit. So to start this off, we're gonna first get this e-locker protector in place on the skid plate. We're gonna come in from the underside with the carriage head bolt. 
get the skid plate set over that flat washer and then one of the flange nuts. The kit comes with eight bolts. Six of them are the same size and two of them are shorter. The two shortest carriage head bolts are going to be used to attach the e-locker protector to the main skid plate. So that's what we're using. The instructions say to torque these to 23 foot-pounds, so we're going to do that right now. So I'm just using my 3 8 torque wrench with a medium length extension and a 14 millimeter socket to tighten these up. That hit the spec. Okay. The next thing the instructions tell you to do is you want to get a couple carriage head bolts in position here and tape them in place because once the skid plate is put underneath the differential, it's going to be a little hard to get these in. So we're just going to take some tape and tape these in place. So I'm just going to utilize some duct tape. Choose whatever tape you want, something that's pretty sticky. I'm just going to try to tape this in place to where it won't move. Now it looks like it'll work just fine. Okay, now we're going to get underneath the rig and we're going to do some prep work. We have to loosen the brackets that hold the rear sway bar in place to where we can sneak this part of the skid plate into position underneath the axle tube. With the brackets for the sway bar really tight, you're not going to be able to sneak this in, so that's why you got to loosen them up. So here's the sway bar brackets I'm talking about that attach the sway bar to the rear axle. They're a 14 millimeter bolt. Because the gas tank is in the way right here on this upper 14 millimeter bolt, I can't get on there with a ratchet. So I'm gonna use a flex head ratcheting wrench from gear wrench to loosen this one up. And what we're doing is we're just backing off these bolts we don't want to remove them all the way on this one I can get on there with a ratchet I just have a short 3 8 extension with a short 14 millimeter socket you can back them out quite a ways without the bolt coming out from the nut so that looks like it's pretty good there I'm gonna loosen the top one up a little bit more with the box end wrench Okay, we've got these backed off quite a ways. Now we're gonna do the same with the bracket on the passenger side. You could kind of feel with your finger on the back side and let you know when the bolt is pretty much flush with the nut. And that's about as far as I'm going. I'm not going too much further than that. Loosen this one. Okay, both brackets are now loose. So the instructions say that we might have to remove this little OEM e-locker housing protector plate in order for the C4 differential skid to fit. We're first going to try to fit it on by keeping this little protector plate in place. But if we find it does get in our way, then we're going to have to remove it. So now we're going to get the skid plate underneath here and test fit it. So we test fit it and it looks like we can keep that e-locker protector in place. We don't have to remove it. At least that's what I saw when I was underneath there. We also learned that by loosening the brackets for the rear sway bar, I was able to tilt this into position no problem. So I'm now going to get on my back underneath the rig and Garrett's going to hand me the skid plate and then I'm going to get the skid plate hooked onto the rear sway bar and it basically kind of holds it in place while you can then get these brackets in place. So we're underneath the rig, I'm on my back, and I'm basically bench pressing the skid plate. So you have to tilt the nose up and get the bracket underneath the sway bar. And this is why you had to loosen the sway bar a little bit. You can fit it underneath, and then now, look, it just hangs there. So these parts of the skid plate are now supporting the skid. I don't have to do anything. Look, Ma, no hands. So it's just being supported there. So now we're gonna get these brackets that go over the top of the axle tube. When you look at it, the smaller side faces the front of the vehicle and the back side is bigger. The bracket is made in such a way there's an extra appendage and that extra appendage you want facing outboard on both sides. So you slide it underneath the brake line and then you just rotate it in place and let it sit there 
and then same with the other side. Go underneath the brake line and then slide it in place. Next, you come in with one of your carriage head bolts underneath, bring it up, get a flat washer on there, and then just get the flange nut started, just flush with the top of the bolt, and that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna do the same with this one on the passenger side. Now I gotta get underneath and get the other one started. So you come in with your carriage head bolt from the bottom, flat washer, and then get your flange nut on there. Okay, that one's started and we'll get the other one started. Next, we're gonna get the pinion flange bracket on and we're just gonna get them started and keep everything loose so we can manipulate it still. So for this pinion bracket, the tabs face the front of the vehicle and the flush side faces the rear so it goes over the top like this you see this notch right here this notch is cut out so it will fit over the top protrusion on the third member and you'll see what i'm talking about when you get in here yourself so fit that over the top push up on it get your bolts into the holes you use a split ring lock washer and then your nut this is just a standard nut not a flange nut Okay, I got that one started, now I just gotta get the other one started. Okay, both of the nuts are started equally. Now we can start cinching everything up. Once you have all your flange nuts on the carriage head bolts screwed on equally, now you're gonna wanna start slowly tightening them down a little bit on the rear, go underneath, turn them a little bit on the front side, and then just slowly seesaw bringing them down to where the bracket meets up with the skid plate flush on both sides but what you don't want to do is just start cranking and tighten one side all the way down first and then go to the back side then you're going to be in a position where it's not going to be tightened down equally so give it a few turns you can use as a reference how many threads are sticking up above the top of the nut to give you an idea of how equally you're tightening down both sides. So use that as a visual reference. I'm just going to utilize this flex head ratcheting gear wrench wrench to tighten them down. It's a 14 millimeter size. So I got a couple threads up above the nut. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to go to this one on the driver's side, do the same thing. Okay, that's about two threads, and now I'm gonna go on the underside and tighten a little bit on that side. So I'm just gonna keep on going back and forth until the brackets meet up with the skid plate. A few turns on both sides and slowly bring it down. We brought the nuts down equally on the rear and the front, and what we noticed is now that they're almost all the way cinched up, there looks to be about six threads showing above each flange nut. So that's how we can tell that we tighten down the brackets equally. So right now, the two on the rear and the two on the front side are showing about six threads above the flange nut. Now we're gonna transition to the torque wrench and we're gonna get these torqued to 23 foot-pounds. So on this side, it looks like a long 14 millimeter socket will work best. You slide it in between the ABS line and the brake line get on there and that's already at 23 foot pounds we're gonna do the same with this one let's see if this will work to get in there it looks like the brake lines in our way because the brake line was in our way we took this 12 millimeter bolt holding the brake line to the rear axle out and now we can get a little bit of flex out of this line to where we can get the socket on it in the instructions from C4 they said that they brought these two brackets together meeting up and we noticed that 23 foot pounds they really weren't meeting up so we raised the torque spec on these bracket nuts to 30 foot pounds and found that they'll meet up that's the spec we're going to use for these is 30 foot pounds and there it is 30 foot pounds we're now on the underside of the vehicle Here's the sway bar and this is the passenger side and with the long 14 millimeter socket it looks like I have just enough room to turn the ratchet towards the shock absorber and it worked 
to get it to the torque spec. Garrett spied that we can come in from the rear for this front bracket on the driver's side and we can get to it. So I have a medium length 3 8 extension, a real short one, like a one inch one, and a deep 14 millimeter socket. And we can come in and get on top of that nut. There it is, 30 foot pounds. So with the pinion bracket, you can get on there with a socket very easily because if you could see here, the bracket ends up kind of tilting towards the front of the vehicle. And so you can't slip a socket over because it hits. So what you have to do is you have to tighten it up with a 14 millimeter open end wrench and just tighten a little bit on one side, tighten a little bit on the other side, feeling with your finger how many threads are sticking up above and just keep on cinching it up to where you think it's tight enough. We tried to get the torque wrench in there, but we can't get the torque wrench in there. The reason why they put those lock washers on there is because you can't really get those tightened all the way down. There's gonna be a gap between the bracket and the actual skid plate. So don't continue to crank, crank, crank thinking that that bracket needs to come in contact with the differential. There's supposed to be a gap. So you just tighten it up enough to where there's a lot of resistance and that lock washer is gonna help prevent that nut being able to come loose and fall off while you're four wheeling. So I learned by looking at the Tech Info website from Toyota that these sway bar bracket bolts need to be tightened to 33 foot pounds. I'm first just going to get these cinched up with a ratchet. Okay, now I'm going to transition to the torque wrench. That hit the torque spec. And that one's at the torque spec. So now we're going to do the same with the driver side sway bar bracket. Cinch them up first. This upper one's a little bit more difficult because you got the gas tank in your way. But it looks like we'll be able to get the torque wrench in there to get it to the proper torque spec. Okay, they're cinched up. Now I'm going to transition to the torque wrench. That one hit. Now with the short 14 millimeter socket, it looks like you could just get on there. It's not perfectly perpendicular, but it's close enough. Okay, that one hit the torque spec. So they're all at 33 foot pounds now. If you followed our lead and took out this little 12 millimeter bolt for the brake line, get that back in. Now I know there must be a torque spec for this, but because this is just holding the brake line bracket on, I'm just going to use my best judgment. I'm just going to use this little short 3 8 ratchet and snug it up. Even if this bolt fell out, nothing's really going to happen to this brake line, but just go by feel. What you don't want to do is break off the bolt or strip it. And so that's why I'm purposely using a short ratchet with less leverage. And that's good. So here is the final result. This is a shot from the rear. You can see how well it's going to protect the underside. And this third member, again, is the lowest hanging thing. And this can take a lot of damage from rocks. And now he's got nice protection. You see they built in some drain holes here so water is not going to get stuck in there and cause corrosion so it could drain out. You'll also notice that they provided a hole so you wouldn't have to remove this skid to change your gear oil. That was a very nice feature that C4 put in. You can see how well it's going to protect along the whole underside here. This skid plate actually protects the flange of the differential and it protects the U-joint. And right here, this is that optional e-locker housing actuator protector. If anything came up, a big rock or something, this is gonna protect the motor really well. Get this option if you do have a e-locker rear end. It would be stupid not to get it because this is offering just a ton of protection for that e-locker actuator which could be expensive to replace if you damage it so go ahead and get this if you have the e-locker option now if you were cruising in the mall parking lot behind garrett this is what it would look like you would see that cool differential skid plate and you would give them extra style points all right we're all done with this job as you saw not too difficult to get in place you have to loosen up the brackets for the rear sway bar so you can sneak 
the skid plate between the axle housing and the sway bar and get it in place and then once it's there it could just hang there then you get those two brackets that go over the axle tube you set those in place you get your carriage bolts with the washers and the nuts and you get those tightened up equally then you get your pinion bracket get that slid over the top of the differential get a couple more washers and nuts started there and then you just slowly bring everything down tightened equally on the axle tube ones you want to just slowly bring them down equally to where the brackets mate up with the differential skid and once you get that done then you want to break out your torque wrench we found that the 23 foot pound spec didn't bring the bracket in contact with the skid plate completely so we upped the spec to 30 foot pounds and that seemed to work pretty good then when it comes to tightening up the pinion bracket you can't really get on there with a socket so you have to get on there with an open and 14 millimeter wrench and again tighten a little on one side tighten up on the other side and bring them down equally and just go by feel because you can't get a torque wrench in there so once you feel like it's pretty tight and those nuts aren't going to come loose then you stop and you're good to go. The reason why they put those lock washers on there is because you can't really get those tightened all the way down. There's going to be a gap between the bracket and the actual skid plate. So don't continue to crank, crank, crank thinking that that bracket needs to come in contact with the differential. There's supposed to be a gap. So you just tighten it up enough to where there's a lot of resistance and that lock washer is going to help prevent that nut being able to come loose and fall off while you're four wheeling. Like I said in other videos where we've installed C4 products, I'm pretty impressed with their workmanship and everything about their products. Everything fits together well. It looks like it's very well built. The welds look good. This again is another good product from C4. We had no problems installing it and I think it's gonna serve Garrett really well protecting his rear differential while he's out cruising the mall. I mean, if you're actually doing some aggressive four-wheeling, it's gonna protect you from taking some hard hits on that low point of the differential. So a little extra protection is a good thing. Personal preference, but I do subscribe to protecting the rear differential on your off-road vehicle. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean and special returning guest Garrett. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods, sick mall crawling, sick four-wheeling, and happy wrenching, people. Peace out. Bye-bye. Hey, and check out the C4 hoodie I got. Pretty awesome. Thank you, Caleb. Bye-bye.